In this video we're going to be looking at how you write functions in Verilog. And functions, in a C sense, are modules in Verilog. A few rules of them. Inputs are always wires. They don't have to be single wires, they can be buses. And outputs can be wires or registers. Remembering, of course, that if you have outputs assigned a noise block, then they may have, must be registers. All right, but that's basically all there are, all the rules there is to modules. So let's have a look at what a coupler would look like. All right, so in this case, I'm going to create. my oh, D flip-flop with, this time I'm going to make it a synchronous clear rather than a asynchronous clear. So the way I do that in Verilog would be to start a module definition, start with the word module, give it a name, D flip-flop sync clear, for example, and then you need to define the inputs, input wire, we've got D, clock and clear, and then output reg Q. Now you'll note in that definition that I've said the data type of each of these, as well as I've said whether it's an input or output. You can also get in outs, so you can actually do have things that work in both directions, but it's a little bit unusual. Right, so within the brackets you specify your arguments like you wouldn't see, as well as deciding whether they are inputs or outputs. We then implement the functionality of our D flip-flop. Remembering it's a synchronous clear, and being synchronous, it does not appear within the sensitivity list, which means it can only happen when the clock is rising. Okay, so if not clear, reset the output. Otherwise, the only other way we could have gotten here is because the clock has changed, so assign the value of D to the output. End, end module. And that's really all there is to modules, right? So it's just module declaration and end module at the end. The argument list, specifying whether things are inputs or outputs. By convention, I normally put the inputs on one line, then the outputs, but you can do things in lots of different ways. You can even declare your inputs and outputs not within the brackets, but I don't think it's worth trying to get it into two different many ways, you'll get confused. So keep it in this sort of format and that'll work quite well. Q's an output and it's a reg because it's decided, uh, it's assigned within a noise block. All right, and remembering we're synchronous because it can only be reset on a positive edge of the clock. Everything happens uh, at the same time as the clock pulse. All right, if we go back to example from the behavioral code where I had all neck edge clear, this is now an asynchronous um, input because it features in the sensitivity list. doesn't have to happen synchronous to the clock. Okay, let's have a look at a, another example. In this case, let's have a look at a multiplexer. And We're going to have four inputs and two control lines. And we're going to have our output, which is a register. 
To make this a little bit easier for me to implement, I'm actually going to declare an internal bus called select, and I'm going to assign my two control inputs, A and B, to that internal bus. And the reason I'm going to do that is going to become clear next, but it's going to enable me to make it a little easier when I use my case statement. Now I'm going to include all of my inputs in my sensitivity list because if anything changes, any input or any control lines, then I want this always block to run. I then use my case statement on select and note that it can compare to two bit variables as well. You don't have to just compare bit, bit by bit. And that's why it's a little bit more convenient rather than having to probably use if and else statements to go if a equals equals zero and b equals equals zero and so forth. So in this case I can now just fill in all the different possible combinations of oh, remember I'm counting in binary here my multiplexer in the case in the always in the module. Alright, so this is a complete example of a four to one multiplexer. Four inputs A, B, C, D, two control lines, single output. We have a continuous assignment and we have an always block and we've got that internal select bus that we're using to help just make our code clear. It doesn't actually change the functionality. And this is where the multiplexing is actually happening. Now, important to remember that this line here, my assign statement, does not have to go first. All right? I could, if I wanted to, put it down here. Okay? If we wanted. And this will still work perfectly fine because it does not execute the assign first and then the always, all right, the whole thing happens in parallel. So the assign and always run in parallel, remembering this is in hardware. Okay, so that continuous assignment, those are wires that are connected that have been linked up, those are always connected and always used within the always block within this case statement here. So it doesn't matter where we put it, that connection is always true. Right, so just watching out for that when it comes to uh, the order in which you write your statements. It does not necessarily uh, matter where you put your always and at. You can have multiple always blocks, multiple assigns within a single module. Right? And obviously commenting is a good thing as well. So comments should mention two slashes to be able to comment. Final example, we're going to do a up counter. So module up count input wire clock, which controls our counting, a reset line, and we're going to have an output register, and we're going to make it an 8-bit counter, which will have the count value in it. We're going to use an always block, because we want to have a couple of conditional statements, so always at positive edge of the clock. So whenever the, whenever the clock has a rising edge, we've got our synchronous reset. Make the count equal to zero. Noting that we don't, this would be interpreted the same way if we wrote that in binary. Okay, we don't need to write out all the zeros. It will know that it's eight bits and the rest of them will all be assumed zero. Or just do it in decimal. All right, as I've done here. Otherwise, count is equal to count plus 8 bits D1. Remembering if we don't put 8-D in there, it's going to assume 32 bits. End our always block, end our module. And that's all it takes to create a counter. All right, the input clock, 
which keeps everything ticking over at a regular rate. A synchronous reset. And our output register count, which is where the count value gets put into. And we're going to see overflow in this. Once it reaches the maximum value where everything is equal to 1, it will just roll itself back down over to 0. A good exercise now is for you to try and then work out a way that you can create a counter that has another input up or down and then see if you can go through and modify this code so you can make it count up or down depending on its operation. Alright, so a quick summary of modules. Okay, so functions in C, what you're used to is writing functions, are known as modules in Verilog. Inputs are always wires. Right, so everything coming in this side are always wires, whereas your outputs can be registers or wires. If you're making a combinational circuit, then they're going to be wires. If you're making something with memory, something sequential, then it's going to be a register. All right, those are some general rules. I showed you how we could make a D flip flop with a synchronous clear. So we declare our module, declare our arguments coming into it using this format. Inputs on the first line, outputs on the second one. You can modify that as you like, but I find that nice and easy. Added our always block like we've seen before, and then just remembering the end module at the end. We had a look at the multiplexer, and we just remember seeing that you can put the order of the always blocks and the sign statements. They can be in any order, all right, because everything happens in parallel. The only time you've got to worry about things, uh, which order they're happening, is if you go and put blocking statements in, then things start to change. But remember, we're not trying to use blocking statements. And then finally, we had a counter example. I called it up count, and it counted through from 0 right up to 255, and then would reset itself, or if a synchronous reset was pushed.